Welcome back to the Lost and Talks podcast, the most lit podcast. This is episode number 37. What's up, guys? How you guys doing this evening? Chilling, fam. Chilling. Chilling. It's hot, yo. It's, it is. It's, it's like, hot, yeah? Yeah, in Toronto, it's uh, summer. I got the <laughs> fan on me, so I don't even, I don't even yeah. know what's going on. It's like super fan. humid. It's like one of those days where it's like your balls stick to your leg. Yeah, I poured outside a little bit earlier too. Yeah. So, whatever. But yeah, hot, humid day. These are the these are the days that I don't really like in summer, but sometimes I kind of appreciate. You know. I like you it because it's a good sweaty day. I like it because it's well, the sun sets at like nine, which is like sick. Mm-hmm. Like nine, it's still daylight. Yeah. That's it's also weird talking about the weather now, like because you're always just like, what does it fucking matter? <laughs> we're gonna yeah. go to war and uh, <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> we're also staying indoors so it's like what does weather matter anymore yeah, yeah exactly well the social distancing thing is definitely besides stores besides bars being closed and certain stores everyone's doing their own thing outside at this point like there's parks are full beaches are full we went to the beach a couple of days ago there was tons of Gyms people are- there Gyms are starting to open, I think, in a mm. week or two. So, pretty much when so. the bars open, it'll be fucking crazy again. So, yep. But I don't know. I don't know if the cases are going to spike up. The cases are going to spike up no matter what. Bro. I don't know if they are. I think. I think. What if? What if they were right? What? What if in the summer it just doesn't happen because it's like summer and virus can't survive. I feel like a virus would would spread because of summer. Hmm. I don't know. Man's just like playing ball, spinning off each other. This is a time where everyone's <laughs> immune system is stronger. Um, people have probably built immunity to it by now. I'm sure there's a chance that all of us have come in contact with it. Um, which therefore we might even be somewhat immune by now. We don't know. Again, but- like like we were saying, I saw a tweet literally today. I will read it right now, actually, where somebody was like, "Yo." I still believe, oh, here it is. I'm 100% convinced most of us had COVID-19 in late December slash January. That was just somebody that tweeted that. And I I truly believe that. Again, we had that shit. (laughs) I was down bad. (laughs) It's possible. Like, I really don't think the first Canadian case was when we called it the first Canadian case. Like, there definitely was cases here before. We just didn't know it was COVID. There's no way it was not covid um, yeah. at some point like because it was happening months before exactly. we started calling it covid and started keeping track of testing so yeah um yeah we'll see though i think the numbers are promising yeah yeah oh anyways uh we have a lot to talk about today I'm very excited mm-hmm. um where would you like to start i don't know if we want to start with the shrooms just because we might have somebody coming on soon so i don't know if we have a long conversation about that mm-hmm. or if you want to go into one of our other topics that we have what, what do you want to do today uh well it's either going to be shrooms or the other one <laughs> <laughs> which are both like controversial <laughs> yeah well fuck it you know what? let's just start with the shrooms yeah screw it uh so yeah we did uh we did shrooms on sunday just the other day, without Kevin Sadly. Yeah, we're, uh, I see Zach is like commenting, or is, like, is he free right now? Like, should you get him on to just talk about this? <laughs> it was his first time. I mean, he'd have yeah. certain things to say as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe another time, but yeah, but it was a, uh, it was a really. This time, I really went through it. We really went through it. I know Ian went through it. I went through it. Yeah. Zach was kind of in and out of it. I don't know where Zach was. Yeah. Zach was, I don't know what he was like, but he he was really talkative. Yeah. He was just, he always wanted to talk to us. And I was just like, dude, I don't know what you're saying right now. (laughs) (laughs) Like like, I'm just focused on the clouds. Like, yeah, (laughs) it was, um, it was a really, really good experience. Like we were all saying like, yo, today felt so long. Like we just went through a lot yeah went mm-hmm. through a lot in that day and yeah. it was 
It's crazy, yo. It was crazy. Mans were crying and shit. Mans were laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's weird. Like uh, a shroom trip is there's there's stages, you know, and I think it varies with different people. But I don't know about you, uh, Jamal. But like, okay, so when you first take it, you you feel very light effects, almost like you're just a little high. You took a couple yeah, tokes, like you're just, you know? You're just getting high, yeah. Yeah, you just got a couple tokes, start feeling a little relaxed. And then there's a time where I was, like, super anxious. Like, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't really sit. I didn't want to sit still. Like, I kept wanting to stand up. I kept wanting to mm-hmm. go. I felt like I wanted to just go for a sprint. Like, <laughs> like I was yeah. really – heart rate increases, not in, like, a bad way, but a little bit you're anxious, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I, I can see some people – having a you know, panic attack at that point. Cause it's like, sometimes it could be too much for some people. Yeah. Um, it was fine though for me. And yeah. And then, and then you go into this, then you start to see the visual effects. You start to see the colors and um, you know, everything is more like if you're outside, it's, it's super bright, um, vivid uh, colors. Uh, things start kind of moving a little bit. Like uh, the water, we were on the beach when we did it, the water was amazing way, way more interesting amazing <laughs> you see like the ripples like that the waves oh we kept talking about how there's just so much water like why <laughs> why is there so much water dude and like when you touch the sand you can feel every, every single grain. little grain and you can see every grain falling <laughs> off your hand like <laughs> it was just a yeah. it was just a great experience um like Ian was saying like yeah i just felt a little high if you will a mm. couple tokes if you that's what it felt like um and i was just a little giddy and you know just chilling like i was just chilling but i could laugh and just vibe we were just vibing out to music and whatnot and honestly like i feel like ian started going through everything a lot deeper first like he was really feeling it and i was getting jealous because i'm like yo like <laughs> i'm not there yet and i'm like trying to figure out why i'm like why can't why can't I be there yet? So I did take a little more than you, I think. Yeah, yeah, you took yeah, he took um three point something grams. I can't remember. Yeah. It was a three on the dot. I think or it was pretty much dot. three. Yeah, he took three grams. I took two point five or two point seven. There's no real big difference there. And yeah, probably not. Zach took one one point something. But anyway, um, yeah, Ian hit hit it faster, and he was in it way earlier than I was, and I was just like, damn, like I want to be there. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, sitting there, and slowly the effects started happening, but then it started going away. So I was like, fuck it. So I was just chilling, and I'm like, yo, let me just roll a ting, just, you know? So I did, and boom, that's when it slapped me. It slapped me. I looked at Zach, and Zach looked like a Greek god. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I, was like I was like, yo, bro, like, what? You're like this is beautiful. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember you called Zach beautiful. I was like, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like I was like, yo, this needs to be. He's like, what? <laughs> Me? <laughs> I was like, yo, we need to take a picture of this like right now because I was just looking at him <laughs> and the way the sun was behind him and bouncing off of his head, and it was just like the per- perfect spot where his hat was, and like he was wearing a white shirt, but the colors that were on him that I could see was like a pink and purple, like almost like a Miami feel to it if you know what I mean, like a Miami yeah. Vice feel to it on his Jeez. shirt, even though it was white. And then the sky was just so blue and the clouds were like in such amazing shapes. It looked like fucking elf shoes. Like it was, <laughs> it, it was That's amazing. Funny. And I was like, bro, like this is beautiful, bro. It was just, it was just amazing. And that's when it sent me, I was just flying after that. Mm-hmm. Those guys, like these guys in a, in a speedboat came through and they were like making some waves and it was just crazy. Like Ian was saying earlier, just to look at the water, like yeah. there's just so much water bro. and it's just so much water, but it's like beautiful. And it's just so many layers and stuff yeah. to water. And it's just, it's just amazing to see. Amazing. Yeah, you see little details in water. You're not really taking it. Yeah. The waves yeah. would like come onto the shore and then go back down. And then like, as they're going back down, I was seeing just random colors like flow mm-hmm. back into the water or if you look at the waves um you could just i don't know what it is it just since it was all kind of being wavy it kind of all just like blended together if you will um yeah it was just mm-hmm. i don't know man it was just 
great experience. Great, great experience overall. Yeah. When I, um, when I hit the, the peak, like the highest point, I think I was at, uh, dude, I started, I started, I was in my head a lot and in a good way. Cause I was, um, honestly, like I started to see flashbacks from, from childhood memories that I rarely think about, mm-hmm. like very rarely think about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, that'll be happening to me too. Like I'll take like a hit or something and then I'll yeah. just have this random memory of like, what the fuck? Like a really specific, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. not important in your life, but it's just like, yeah. Really- yeah that's yeah. what i was having i was having and for me and since we we're on a beach i started i remember childhood memories on on a yeah, beach i, remember I started getting memories of that back very vivid too like I, my eyes are open i'm looking at the water but i'm like it's like a movie was playing in my head like i could i could see these moments back mm-hmm. when i was a child um that was really cool um yeah i've heard i've heard nothing bad but i heard you could also get repressed memories to come mm-hmm. back yeah um if there's anything bad that's mm-hmm. happened i didn't have any of that but i'm wondering now if that's a possibility kind of crazy to think about i'll try to for- oh, i'll try to force that every once in a while out of my so head because I, I don't want it to be i don't want to be caught off guard you know like mm. i'm like about to get married or something and then this fucking repress <laughs> comes back. i'm trying to like you know when i'm every once in a while when i'm bored i'm just like you know i just really think really hard yeah so what happened to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I fucked up? I just try to do trauma? like I try to just go through all the years, you know, all the childhood years, like very like try to think about school years and stuff, and like put it together to be like, okay, you know, what what was I doing at each moment? You know? Yeah, that's mm. jokes. Yeah. Um, Ian said the realest thing ever in the world, and it literally <laughs> made me cry. <laughs> you did cry. You shed tears, man. It literally made <laughs> me cry, and it was so stupid. It's actually and stupid. It's like Zach, <laughs> Zach pulled out his phone and he was like recording Ian. And then Ian's like, <laughs> Ian was like, what are you doing, bro? You're just recording life. You're just recording <laughs> life. And I was just like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, bro, that's so real. Like we are, we're just recording life. Like that's it. And I was like, damn, that's like deep. Like that's sad. <laughs> and life as it happens. Yeah, man. And I <laughs> cried. I literally cried. I yeah. was like, wow, like this is this is all we're doing. We're just recording life. Like, and it's still gonna go. Time's still moving. There's just so much going on in the world that all we can really do is just record life from time to time and mm-hmm. hope other people see it, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, like, yo, this is real, bro. <laughs> Super real. Yeah, that was crazy. And then and then I guess by the end of it, I was feeling super clear headed. I was still a little like all the all the effects of the hallucinations and the visual effects gone away, but you're just like super clear minded at the end. I was like super calm. Like mm-hmm. the most calm of like no anxiety, nothing. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like I had a good meditation. Mm-hmm. The best meditation I, I'd ever have. Yeah. I was just super chill. I literally felt like it was like the perfect day. Like it was just good. It was a little cold. But I didn't mind. Like I got cold. Yeah, there's times where I was literally shivering. Yeah, I was like, bro, it was like, kind, I'm freezing. It was kind of windy, like, and then like the yeah. the clouds would like cover up the sun. Mm-hmm. But um, I brought my jacket and shit, so I was like, it wasn't too bad. But um, other than that, literally, it felt like it was just like the perfect day. I was yeah. Towards the end of it, it was just coming in and out in waves. So I'd be cool, and then sometimes I see some visual stuff, or I might feel a little funny. But uh, towards the end of the night, yeah, I just felt cool. Like I was like, yeah, I could stay up for the rest of the day, like even though today felt so long, like we got so much done. Um, she's here, by the way. Um, I feel like I could, I could keep going, you know? It was great. So I'm We're going to let our guest in. Hello. Hey. hey guys. What's hey. up, how you doing? Good, how are you guys? All right. Good. Um, we have... 10 maybe 15 minutes left on this one okay so let's just yeah let's just start and then whenever it cuts off it'll cut off and then i'll resend you a link again okay okay cool just to join um but uh should we get her to record or no or is it fine i don't need it you don't need it okay cool it's fine all right cool um so welcome to the podcast uh we have a guest Uh, on guys whoever isn't able to watch um on on our show lost in talks podcast um we don't really do introductions we like to let our people 
do their introductions. So please let the people know who you are. Hi guys, I'm Sydney Ray. Um, I'm a freelance journalist, um, music guru. I love basketball pretty much. Simple gal, travel enthusiast when you could travel, but obviously you can't travel now, so I'm pretty yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, yes, that's pretty much it. Simple awesome. thing. Yeah. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, it's been a pretty weird two weeks or so. Yeah. it's been a crazy year <laughs> yeah so yeah. <laughs> i guess starting off in january kobe dies and all of a sudden there's a huge pandemic and then just shit hits the fan and then now it's a, a pretty much a revolution if you want to put that in quotations that's happening yeah. in our eyes so what's next like an alien invasion and dinosaurs coming to life like, oh, like i saw that on twitter you know what i mean yeah. aliens aren't trying to touch us right now they're like they're like shit they got too much on their plate right now yeah the aliens are watching and they're like you know what not this is not the time <laughs> you know? like, yeah earth earth is not earth is not safe right now so but yeah it's uh it's it's been pretty interesting to see what's going on and you know i guess like our parents talking about it and especially now what's happening Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of like reliving um like another movement right so yeah so yeah let's uh let's get to the shit so um you kind of saw what we had dropped uh earlier or last week or the week before and then you reached out and said you wanted to you know just voice your opinions and perspective on things uh regarding the black lives matter movement and everything that's going on in the states and everything that's going on here and around the world uh regarding police brutality and uh black people pretty much um mm -hmm. so yeah what did, yeah what did you want to what do you want to talk about today um yeah like i think not i think but something that i've been having conversations with with a lot of people is that um all of a sudden like race and diversity is like a huge thing it's like it just happened like two weeks ago and like no one really realized that it actually existed mm -hmm. now all of a sudden now everybody's talking about it. You have companies now openly talking about it, like big companies mm -hmm. like Nike, Adidas. Yeah. Every single company you could think about in the entire world talking about race and diversity and how they want to diversify, um, you know, management, et cetera, all the way down. Um, but out of that, you start seeing a lot of people coming out and speaking about um, different different things happening in like their workplaces, right? Yeah. So um, it's it's been pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny the company like the, with the company perspective. Yeah, they start coming out now, talking about it, and it should have been a conversation a long time ago. Exactly. Especially companies that have pushed that culture and haven't said shit until recently. Now, because they're pretty much being forced to, or they look bad, and mm -hmm. and then you start to think like, or do they actually care? Exactly. Like, yeah. I know that a it, lot of sorry. Um, yeah, on. a lot of people are just a lot of companies are now throwing money, like for example Nike. Um, mm -hmm. Adidas were throwing like over like a hundred million dollars um, but you're like are you doing that because you want to make a difference mm -hmm. or are you doing that because you know that you don't want to lose money mm -hmm. and I think that's what like a lot of people are like questioning and that's why yeah. I'm even questioning too at the same time mm -hmm. yeah right what what would you want them to do or what should they have done this issue should have been addressed from time. That's, that's, that's my whole point. Like, why mm. is it all of a sudden now that everyone's coming together and asking like, oh, now we have to diversify like our management team. Now let's, let's talk about racism. Like let's get like diversity courses throughout, throughout like the companies. Like this should have been done probably when the company had started. <laughs> yeah. You know? Sure. And it's like very um, like reactive as, as instead of being like very proactive. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, on Twitter, there's a former employee from Aritzia who is having an ongoing battle with the CEO, like online, because she's talking about how like they were like racist towards her, right? Mm. And now all of a sudden you have like a flood of employees talking about these things and their experiences, and now like the CEO is like obviously being interviewed and is like, yeah, like this is like we understand like there's an issue, but it's not really happening, right? And like mm -hmm. kind of like blowing it off because they yeah. obviously don't want to look bad. But it's just like, I think like when people are going online and they're saying things, I think CEOs like really need to kind of take a look at like what's happening and just kind of crack down because like it actually looks bad for the brand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even, um, 
let's even point out uh, like the NFL. Um, if we want to yeah. think about it, Colin Kaepernick was on his knee how long ago? You know what I mean? And uh, he pretty much got forced out of the league, right? So that's another example of just yeah. something that you're talking about where these companies, and, it's, and now we're looking, a lot of people are looking at the NFL to say something and it's kind of weird. Have, I don't know, it'd be, yeah. it'd be kind of weird. I feel like um, there has been a statement, but nothing. Yeah, no, ro- no ro- yeah, Roger Goodell, he made a statement. And I yeah, think he right. Did, he, he, apo- he knew that the NFL wasn't um, proactive on this and they should have said something a long time ago, but he, yeah. didn't, they didn't, he didn't make any direct reference for, towards no. Colin Kaepernick, which he should have done because that exactly. was the big, obviously the NFL was related to this issue a lot more because of the Colin Kaepernick attention that it already had. So mm-hmm. there should have been a direct call to that. And then, but I, I mean, the thing that they did do was um, acknowledge that they didn't uh, address this earlier and they should have. And that's what other companies should have been doing as well. You know? Yes. Yes. Indeed. Okay. Yeah, especially the NFL. Cause come on, man. Like majority of their players are black. That's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, it's no, that's so true. But, I kind of think about it. I think the NFL knows that they screwed up and I don't know if they're going to hire him because I think like they're already so far deep into it. Yeah. Right. And if they hire him, they'd be like, okay, well, we would have told you all along. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, I forgot who it was. I saw it on Twitter, but I think it was a a Senator of Minnesota. He said that the Patriots should hire Colin Kaepernick Mm. um, or something like that, but Mm. we'll see. Right. Yeah, I feel like it would be kind of weird. <laughs> it would be kind yeah. of awkward. Um, I feel like at this point, you just you kind of cut your losses. Because um, I That's see, insane. I see he probably has other opportunities elsewhere as long as there's a big enough bag for him. But, yeah, I mean, he yeah. did the training camp this year. So if yeah. they're going to hire him now, it's clearly, they were clearly racist earlier this year then, you know, and mm-hmm. they're admitting yeah. that if they did it. So it's kind of... That's that's the thing. I think they went too like it's they're too deep into it yeah, now. So yeah. they're like if they hire him, like he was right all along, right? Mm-hmm. So I I don't know. It sucks though because like he's been training from time. Yeah. I mean he's he's always anytime he's interviewed, they're always like he's like yeah, like I'm ready, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's one of those things where like it's ego and it's just like yeah, we we don't want to admit like you know that we that we were wrong in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. It sucks. What um what type of interactions have you been having with friends, family, um, since all of this has kind of sparked up <laughs> again? Yeah. Um so I come from a very like multiracial background. My dad's half Asian and uh Chinese sorry, Chinese and Trinidadian. My mom's Spanish, Portuguese, and Venezuelan. Mm-hmm. Um so growing up for me, like we we actually like knew about like our cultures, right? Like every single thing. So how our grandparents came to Trinidad, um, even like the good and the bad. So we learned about the Spanish Inquisition. We learned about like slavery, et cetera, right? Due to colonialism, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so for us, like my, the way that my father raised us was he was just very like outspoken and he just kind of told us straight up like what, what, what it's like, right? So for us, like this whole thing isn't new. Like it's yeah. not like, a new thing where you know that it's happening I personally would say that I never I was never put in like a position where I felt I was like discriminated against but I did actually witness it like so my brother is much darker than me um and growing up a lot of people would think he was adopted Mm -hmm. or people to ask my mom if like she has a different if I have like a different dad right because like he played basketball so with that it was just like was really really annoying and like almost very saddening because this is like my brother right and like this is my blood and I think people just like kind of look at us differently just because of our our skin color right Mm -hmm. um but for friends interactions it's weird though like I have like people some people apologizing I'm like you have no reason to apologize to me like I you know it's it's kind of weird yeah I'm sorry and I'm like (laughs) yeah no I feel you like I I've gotten some dms from some people and I'm just like dude like just chill (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. you're you're a friend like I like you I know you're not one (laughs) of them you know what I mean what what, what can I do like is there anything you want me to do I'm like I don't know open up your bag and give me a million (laughs) dollars yeah exactly but um I think that it's just 
yeah I'm just like honestly guys like I'm I'm chilling like I'm not like I'm not one of those people that's like very like pro like you know what I mean Mm -hmm. I'm just like listen like what you can do especially if you're not like a minority or even if you are a minority is just like you know keep signing petitions like if you are in a position of power like keep you know invoking your voice to speak on behalf of like you know black people if you have them or like hire more etc like there's so many different things that you could do right especially if you are in a position of power and do so um start book clubs like my girlfriend um she's starting a book club with other minorities and white people Mm -hmm. um you know reading i guess um black empowerment books and like them talking about the black experience etc which is which is fine right um so i'm like keep doing those things i guess just to educate yourself because at this point i think for everybody it's just a whole um, everyone's educating themselves like there's even some black people who are Caribbean don't even know their own roots right yeah exactly so I think yeah. for everybody it's uh it's a huge I guess shock in some mm-hmm. sense right yeah for sure for sure yeah I've been um I've had a couple conversations like that as well and yeah I, I usually say about the same thing just educate yourself there's just a lot of knowledge that's going on I even have some friends that even after I had said my things on the podcast that reached out and uh, they said, damn, like, I didn't know that those were the things that were going on in your head while we were hanging out. Like you, you mm-hmm. feeling like you have to be a certain way or look over your shoulder a lot of the time. So yeah, um, it's cool. It's just cool hearing from the people that I do care about mm-hmm. um, that they do recognize that, Hey, they were blind to that. They were ignorant to that. So um, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the, the recognition and the love that we as a people are starting to get yeah. you know, more more communication and just conversations um that are happening between everybody it's good did you guys have these conversations prior with friends or was it just kind of like a like, kind of like a bypass like if something happened in the news kind of guys would like raise something or was it just kind of like everyone's just kind of living in their own bubble i want to say a little bit of both like we all have a lot of conversations we talk a lot and we're able to get you know into the the deep stuff but at the same time we don't have a lot of them like mm-hmm. it's no. mostly other stuff mostly other stuff and when we are talking about race and stereotypes and, or how we feel being people of color or or not people of color um we look at we a lot of the time we approach it with humor you know what I mean? Yeah, As uh, most people sarcastic. do, right? Yeah. Exactly. So you just try to keep it, keep the conversation nice and light because at the same time it is something that not a, a lot of people actually do talk about on a regular basis. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah. It's, it's like true. the huge yeah. elephant in the room, right? Mm-hmm. 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 But I don't know. I'm just kind of like, why don't you just, fit? for me, it's just like, I think it's, I think some people may feel uncomfortable because they don't know how the other person will react, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm the type of person just like honestly, like just ask away. Like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna fight you or anything like that, you know? Because everyone is entitled to their opinion, unless it's not like coming out of bigotry, then that's a completely different story. Yeah. But I think a lot of people now um, do have a lot, a lot of questions, and I do see online where. Um, some black people are just like, yeah, like, you know, it's not up to us to educate you, which is fair enough. But at the mm-hmm. same time, too, um, people don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people don't know. And I think with, especially with having allies, right, you do need to build that relationship yeah. because you don't mm-hmm. want people to go back, like, in hiding and be like, well, you know, I approached her and, like, I was asking her questions, but she doesn't want to talk to me because she feels like I need to educate myself more. I don't think that's like the right approach when it comes to these things mm-hmm. um, because you do have a lot of people who actually care and just be like, okay, like I recognize, you know, privilege or whatever the case may be. And like, now I want to discuss it and, you know, continue these sort of like conversations, which I think that we should be open to. I don't think we should just be like, okay, well, this is all on you. You guys need to figure shit out. Yeah. Facts. You're right. That's just me. <laughs> no, I feel you on that one for sure um let's end this here yeah and uh then we'll continue sure. on the next one okay <laughs> Looks like but um <coughs> damn um what was i gonna say i was gonna get back into stuff 
But say, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about um, what Kevin had. We have like a, a, a document of like topics and stuff like that. But Kevin had on there basically what do we need the police like for? So defunding the police and that whole situation and mm. everybody's everybody's thoughts on that basically. Whoever wants to start, feel free. Like what do the police really need to do? Yeah. Like what's what's necessary? Mm-hmm. And then what's not? Yeah. Or what's you know too much because <laughs> yeah, and it's over policing, right? Um, yes, because there's a lot of situations where well, people call the police yeah. when we don't need the police. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I know we need we need police for investigation. So mm-hmm. if someone is murdered, you need investigators to find yeah. those people who do those things, right? Mm-hmm. So suspects, yeah. So definitely investigation crimes that have been committed already that need to be solved. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that homicide, arson, drug related stuff, that's serious. You know what I mean? And then we can get into petty drug stuff later, but, um, then drugs is the most complicated one because there's just so much going around. Like people are getting arrested and put into jail for way longer than they should over very little drugs, especially in the U S. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would say drug, like petty drug stuff is very, that's nonviolent. I don't think is necessary. Well, that whole system needs to be mm-hmm. reformulated because it was brought on by just political propaganda in a way where it's like they, people who just wanted to make their, make their terms very clear, like their election terms look very yeah. good. The fact that they're cracking down on uh, um, Nixon, on, on right? Crime. Nixon was yeah. one of those. It was President. Nixon, Reagan really yeah. amped it up and Clinton okay. also helped with it too. But it was mm-hmm. like, basically they, they worded it in a way where it was like, you know, the way to stop like high level drug stuff is to crack down on the people who are just starting out. So they started going super hard on that and it didn't really lead to any drop in, you know, the, the actual violent crimes and stuff, but they were just, that's where the whole stop and frisk stuff and all that stuff Mm -hmm. came about. And it's like, it's not just the implementation of it, but it's like the, you're training cops with that mindset now of like, we have to treat even the lowest level people on the street who are doing petty crimes as potential drug Lords in training basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're treating them, everybody as a violent threat, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because a lot of, you got to, like, I think they lock up too many drug users. You know, there's a difference between a drug user and someone who does sell it. Those are two different things. Exactly. And they, they just blend those two peoples together. Right. Oh, you have cocaine on you? Well, you're, you must be a dealer, whatever. And then when they lock you up, and maybe you're a user. I, I think decriminalization of drugs is probably the right way to go. I don't think America is, America is really far from doing that. They do it in Europe right mm-hmm. uh yeah. countries like portugal uh there's a few others uh they've decriminalized drugs almost completely even the hardcore ones because they they're in the mindset where if you're a user like rehabilitation is more important than just locking you up for 10 years yeah so i think or, or keeping you overnight so you can get your high yeah. Up. Yeah. yeah right mm-hmm. and then and then in america it's the black community that gets affected the most and they're the ones that get put in jail and that's why they're the highest percentage of, you know, that race in jail. Um, Among other things. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of other things too, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah, know. The problem too yeah. is just like the funding of police is always, it's, it's funny, like people, you see these speeches of um, like heads of police unions who are like crying that like, you know, they're saying, how are you turning police into treating us like animals or making it, you know, and they're like, they're they're like saying what are you going to do now when you know when you if we have no police it's not no police it's just if you look at all the statistics of budgets in cities most most cases you have the police budget is way over um it is yeah yeah it's way uh it's just too overfunded it's overfunded yeah Yeah. the problem is is like they're giving military grade equipment to like street level cops you know and regular how do they need that yeah (laughs) well just to hop on Kevin's point, I mean, the prison systems are, are privatized, so they need people to fill up the prison. So what you need to do is you need to incriminate more people, right? Mm-hmm. I was talking to my friend about this. I think the police force itself, um, the reason why they're upset, um, I think it's not only, 
I think you have to look at the fact that when you buy armor, when you buy guns, that's people losing money, right? So if you mm-hmm. defund, which means if you cut the cost of funding the police force, right, with all these militarized weapons, guess who else is losing money, right? You're looking at all the factories who make guns. You're looking at all the factories who make body armor, right? Mm-hmm. So I think the I think the bigger picture is that the lobbyists and people in the corporate and those in those sectors, they're kind of like, we don't want to lose money, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, too, we have to just look at the rhetoric that's being spoken in the news as well, because that plays another part, too, right? Mm. I, like, I used to work in a newsroom, so I know what it's like and, like, you know, what editors want you to say so the public can, you know, essentially get a reaction out of it. So a lot of the times, like, the news is so known to spin things, right? They mm. use they use different words. And when you use specific words, it can mean more of like a negative connotation or like a positive connotation, depending on, you know, how you word it, right? So I think the news also plays a huge factor in it too, because right now I don't always view the news. Um, I don't always take whatever information, like with a, I can only take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know? Yeah. You have I to do, look at the perspective of who's writing it, you know? The news, the, the news breeds fear especially for people it breeds fear for white people because because mm-hmm. what happens is they see the name same the similar news uh stories over and over again black person does this black person does that and so the white person doesn't even live a, live anywhere near white uh, black people that don't understand that they're not all like this might actually start to think that they're violent people and that could mm-hmm. breed racism and mm-hmm. that i think the media is very much responsible for a lot of that for yeah. sure. I, for sure. I, I agree with that. It's like it's like thinking again to um, that that Vince Staples music video, Mama Sita. Like the whole twist in that yeah. music video. You know, you're walking through the hood. You're seeing a tatted up Mexican dude. You're seeing black people do this. Seeing black people do that. There's all this violence in the hood, and the twist in the music video is it's all being viewed through a museum, and it's white folks pointing pointing at everybody in the uh, in the picture. Um, and that's yeah, that's definitely what the media does. The media is basically like their gallery to what's going on in the hood and what's popping, basically. <laughs> you know, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You made a great point that like the prison system is is a. Uh, um, I mean, they're all money making institutions, and they're all making money off of each other. So they all depend on each other, right? The police brings in the the, yep. the prison system, and the prison system has the lobbyists for the political parties and the media, and it's all connected. So, so they're all yeah. privatized. They're not state run. No, they're all privatized. Wow. So if That's you have crazy. a lot of money, you could technically own a prison system. Um, but also, to you, a lot of prison systems, a lot of companies um, end up using the labor in prisons as well. So yeah. Starbucks, Victoria's Secret, um, there's, there's a whole bunch, McDonald's, et cetera. They actually use the workers in there with, and they get paid like pennies, like 14 cents an hour. It's like modern day um, slavery. Yeah, basically. If you watch the thirteenth, yeah. if you watch the thirteenth, you'll see how basically the prison system is just continuation of slavery in, in America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, basically. Basically. So they basically these as it, it's it's a whole it's a vicious cycle. So as simple as it looks, I feel like okay, okay, like we have to take away money from the police. It's just a chain reaction when it comes to like other other things in in that system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I spoke to somebody on another live is like, you also have to look at like the judges as well too, the DAs, the prosecutors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You really need to rip down every single thing because mm-hmm. everybody's involved, right? Um, yeah, there's many, levels. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Look how many judges threw so many innocent people in jail. And now there's so many cases now, like Kim Kardashian is one of them. She's been advocating for, for some of them as well too. Um, getting them, I think it's what, clemency, I believe, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. to get them out of prison for serving crimes that they've never done or for serving like really petty drug crimes. Like they got caught with like a pound of weed and now, you know, they locked up in jail for like 25 years. Sorry, I just hurt my finger. Ow. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> um, so when we were 
when we were kind of going through some of the topics like defunding the police and coming up with some of the solutions like that, uh, again, Kevin brought up something very interesting, a bit on the lighter side, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, would, so down. They're like, would, would you, yeah. I know, eh? <laughs> would you be down for vigilantes, Batmans? Is this time? Is this, is this how we work the superheroes into yeah. the equation? I mean, Honestly, and they need to powers. take down. They need to take down the. <laughs> I mean, usually Batman is working with the police, but he needs to work. It needs to be the other way around this time. You know, he needs, he needs to kind of be the Joker of. Mm. You know, we need a, a mm. good Joker. That's mm. actually very Jeez. interesting because yeah. remember in the the Dark Knight, um, the one with the Joker, um, the Joker has people working in the police station, right? That's yes. how. Um, Harvey Dent became Mm -hmm. Two-Face, etc. And I think the Joker was sort of alluding that, like, to Batman, like, listen, like, or no, not to, um, to the commissioner, to the commissioner Gordon. He's like, you know, you have, like, a lot of bad apples, basically, in your, in your workforce, right? And I think um, Commissioner Gordon was kind of, like, blinded to that until, um, you know, the thing with Harvey Dent happened, and I guess his girlfriend, too, before she, she died, right? Yeah um so yeah like you are right like he he needs like that sort of like joker batman you need like a spider-man a tony stark you basically need the avengers at this point because like yeah it's time time. (laughs) yeah we need need some superheroes (laughs) modern day superheroes some modern day superheroes (laughs) if the government doesn't if the government doesn't just lock them up in three seconds but (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know yeah, yeah, that's what would happen probably over some time just yeah like yeah people are getting a little wild now and it's getting dangerous for sure that'd be kind of cool though yeah that's what i'm saying like it might like if we're gonna restart everything yeah. if we're gonna really you know this is technically the biggest world resolution that's been going on so like I'm Elon Musk, it. bro, what are you saying? Like, or uh, <laughs> exactly. Jeff Bezos. I know Jeff Bezos has been in the gym, like, whatever. Like, come on, man. You know, <laughs> that's a Batman right there. Like, Je- Jeff Bezos is not the guy. Not, <laughs> his people work at Amazon are slaves, yeah. dude. <laughs> Definitely not. But you need somebody with money, though, or some people with money to get involved. Guess, yeah. yeah, we need so some Elon influence. Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk would be cool. Maybe maybe that's what they're trying to do with their kid. Him and, him and his, <laughs> yeah, he's the savior. Yeah, yeah. That'd be he's a, like he's to be like Idris Alba. Yeah, is it a he? It's a he. It's a he. he. I don't know. You know, I just see like the math equation of a name. So yeah, I that's why I didn't even look into it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He yeah. named all his other children regular names. I don't know why that kid gets the weird one. <laughs> Grimes. Yeah, that's yeah, because it's with Grimes. That's why. I guess you so. Know, you gotta change it up. You gotta switch it up. Now he's rich, you know. It's a different life, I guess. That's what he's exactly. Living, you know. Um, so yeah, I was even thinking when it comes to yeah defunding the police and everything like that. Uh, how do you feel about even more people in the community? So like even just the black community itself handling some of the issues that's going on there. Like would that would that be have to be a neighborhood thing? Would that have to be a more organized thing for all of us to kind of you know set up? I'm not too sure. Yeah. See, we've never we we haven't mm-hmm. lived in a time where we we ha- we've thought about what it means to think of our own law system, right? Like our own law enforcement system, which is mm-hmm. before the I don't know the seven. Where I think police systems haven't been established only up until like I think a. Uh, under 100, 200 years, yeah. or something like after yeah. 1800 or something, right? So Very new. Yeah. Before it was just kind of, I, I uh, John Oliver, they're saying the first police uh, force in America was actually a group of people who were trying to catch, capture runaway slaves and bring them back, right? So yeah. mm-hmm. there was even that, like the, the idea of policing was started f- for mm-hmm. racist purposes. So it's like that has been. That's why it's 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 really just it's such a deep rooted problem because it's in like you said it's involved in the rhetoric and the laws so it's like it's so hard to just take all of those things out because it's so attached to all of these systems that are have like two hundred years of operation you know now so they're so ingrained into these cultures and um, yeah yeah it's just like we need to kind of re like not start from the bottom because obviously we can't just 
just, you know, throw everything out and start over again, but like really think about what we need from a police force, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm, that's definitely true. I, I actually um, had a good question about being a cop just for one second. So, okay, a lot of these cops have been on the force for a long time, right? Some of them like 20 years. I think the longer you're a cop, the more you start to not value humans as much as humans, you know, you not look at them the same way. Start looking at them like animals because I could see that happening. It right. may be for mental health sake might not be the best for a cop to be on the force for 25 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really, yeah. I, I, uh, I get where you're coming from. Um, at, but at the same time, you know, it kind of depends on the person. Yeah. Um, I feel like that could be for almost any job. And, and even just know? the situations they might've faced in their. Yeah. Career, yeah. You know? yeah. Cause like, but, don't get me wrong. Like police do deal with sometimes shitty people all the time. Yeah. So you start to look at everyone like that over like a long period of time you know well, it's kind of oh. like the military like you yeah. know a lot of um soldiers come back with ptsd mm -hmm. and there's been studies um that have done with like that um that's been uh taken like like cops right mm -hmm. and they do build some sort of ptsd mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the environment that they sit in right and i think mm -hmm. that's just like everybody if you are in an environment like where you're consistently being threatened right your yeah. life is on the line etc you, um, you kind of tend to dehumanize human beings, right? Yeah. Um, so I think part of the thing is having cops um, have like, you know, more mental health, like hotlines or, or something like that. I think where, so, yeah. You know, they could kind of talk to somebody through because I think, you know, after a while when you are caught up in that environment all the time, mm. um, human beings aren't anything anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's the case for everybody. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's definitely racist cops that are attacking black people for sure, but there yeah. there's some that maybe are fucked up like that too, and now they just blend everything together like people are bad. I mean, know? even the seminars that they make these cops tra attend, where mm. uh, it's like these shoot to kill, and like they, you know, it's yeah. basically in, they're they're beating it into them that it's like yeah. this one percent or zero point one percent chance that you have to draw your firearm in your in your entire career you have to be ready to kill that person and, and, you know, to save other people. And it's like, they really instill that in them. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, you're driving around the street, basically expecting to have to kill somebody bad, you know? Yeah. Even it though, could be, the training is definitely yeah. probably part yeah. of the problem. Most shifts, too. you know, wh how many things are you going to um, see on, on most shifts, you know? It's yeah. like very militarized. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, they should do know. it. Like Britain, Britain, Britain has their own police brutality problems too, but the cops there don't even have guns. And it's and it seems to work for them, and I yeah. always thought like, why can't that work in America? Is it because yeah, the time. is it because the the the, hum, uh, the citizens are too strapped too? Or <laughs> I think yeah. so. I think yeah. everybody, yeah. yeah, everybody. But see, yeah. I think like it's that's kind of like it might be a chicken or egg thing. But I feel like the police started it. The police kept funding themselves, and that's mm -hmm. what made gangs. That's what made uh, yeah. I any, feel like everybody yeah, kind of started up. this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just that that mentality that they had, you know. Because again, realistically, communities were handling their own communities. However, yeah, it was you know seen fit before. Um, then you get the police. Then stuff starts happening in the streets between people. Now people start having enemies. You know what I mean? And you know, once you're legally able to also get guns, or mm -hmm. once you have a good group of people that you can feel like you you know you can start committing crimes or being rebellious and mm -hmm. you froze there? yes froze yeah. whoa 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 that was trippy <laughs> he was talking and then he froze <laughs> he might come back yeah or not i was gonna throw on a point from our last little topic real quick uh they do hire a lot of cops that are ex-military yeah. yeah that's very common you'll have a cop who did you know five five years in the military and then whatever his service ended and and then the i guess and the i guess the closest profession is being a cop so they become one but they still have these they still have the mentality of military sometimes yeah and they that becomes brutality in police force so and yeah that's a problem with, like, too their own like they're basically dealing with ptsd oh yeah it's like major ptsd you know yeah a lot of people if you 
you know, um, read about like ex military, they're just messed up, you know? Um, so, and then on top of that, like you're bringing that into like, you know, being a cop dealing with just like, I guess, average people. You don't look at these people as people anymore. You kind of look at them as like a threat, right? Yeah. It's two different things. Yeah. Like in the military, you have this very defined enemy. But then in the police, you're actually supposed to just be serving your community. You know, you're it's supposed to be a very positive thing. You're supposed to help your people. Exactly. Yeah, like help. Yeah. Yeah. When you have this kind of militant mindset, it's it's the the police force does become this opposition. That's why they feel like this enemy now, right? And I don't know how they don't understand that they that they made themselves become the enemy to to the people that they're supposed to be protecting. I know. I. But then again, like. It's like we've been talking about. I think it's just like the whole, like the whole system, right? Yeah. You know, and mm. you have a lot of cops. Um, there's been a video circulating on Instagram. You do have a lot of cops saying that uh, they had a quota of how many people they had to arrest, right? And yeah. if they didn't arrest like a certain amount of people in a month, they would they would get fired, right? Mm. So they were saying like, you know, someone's loitering, you get a ticket or you get arrested mm-hmm. right someone is like a homeless person right he's sleeping you know he looks drugged up like they would just like lock them up right so yeah it's, I I have a friend who's a cop and he's like you know he's like it's very it's, it's hard you know um he's like it's very hard he's like not only the fact that it's dangerous right mm-hmm. but at the same time too you have to try harder to make people feel that like you're good you know so if you get a call and you're trying to de-escalate you're trying to like you know really do your best right yeah. and he's like there's been times where sometimes you know he comes along like kids and like you know he just wants to say hello and the kids are just like all shook mm, because they're like they're scared, oh my yeah. god yeah, yeah. Scared, right? yeah. there's a cop like is he is he gonna do something and like he's like that hurts yeah and he's like i'm just trying to like it's like I'm just trying to be a friendly dude, and like you know, yeah. just once he puts the like, uniform off, and it's funny, he takes the uniform off. He's just a regular guy. Yeah, I love seeing those Instagram videos of cops, you know, like playing basketball with kids and stuff, and you know, like you like seeing that the the community aspect uh-huh. of it because that is what you you would want from your police. You'd want them to be in the community and knowing, you know, knowing the people around and stuff. But yeah, like it's it's both sides. Like we don't trust them, and and you know, they. they they've had and, and the people that do want to be trusted it's hard right it's yeah kind of they're like, fighting yeah. the whole system yeah, yeah. Those, those, exactly. the small percentage of them that do want to just do their job and do it yeah, right they do and like mm-hmm. it's, i think part of that should be like you know more community involvement you know getting people to trust you right yeah. but that's very hard because yeah yeah because you have events like this which exactly screw hard. it all up and then starting from zero again for them exactly exactly yeah, yeah. jamal's power went out by the way that's why he left <laughs> oh, yeah. i think it's raining yeah, yeah okay we're back and, and I'm uh, back. <laughs> your half of you is back just the audio is back <laughs> yeah um yeah just the audio is back i just had the power fucking go out on my whole like area pretty much um, I just looked at the window. I could see a couple blocks down, and just everything's out. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. And then the sign, now yeah, Sydney's it's... Sydney's yeah. fucking Wi-Fi went out too just now. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, yeah. So it's time. It's time to come back to the live pod. I think. I think that's what the sign is for. Today. Yeah, it's it's the time. So yeah, we are going to be doing um live pod next week finally. So <laughs> that's gonna be good. Bring the bottles out. Mm-hmm. Bottle boys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to celebrate that Kobe, that Kobe yeah. that we, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, facts. Um, we'll yeah, I'm excited that. to do it. We'll start, we'll start putting it on Instagram live again, and we'll, yeah. uh, yeah. Do we need to be so, like socially distant and shit though? Are people gonna call us out or are yeah, we socially come distant? On. Nah, people might call us out. I'm not even don't, lie to you. They people can't. Might. How I mean, protest? I don't think people give a shit anymore. Actually, yeah, Bro, that's true. I've I don't been, know. I've been people are wild channels. Some channels on YouTube where people, where it's like a group of people, they've literally been sitting six feet away from each other. It's crazy. I'm like, I didn't even know you guys had that much space in your living room. 
<laughs> nah, man. With the protests going on, people at the parks and the beach, and, and the the they increased the the size here to ten people for yeah. a gathering. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's not gonna be a big deal. I don't think I was gonna really call us out. Yeah. Also, full disclosure, we've been fucking going out and shooting in the in the forest. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we've been. Jamal's been, been in Ian's been like, whip like. How many times already? So. Sure, but that's two of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been no whole... Ian's at work touching mans and this and that. Dude, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, where I work, there's no social distancing going on, dude. Like That is disgusting. <laughs> it's the people who work there. Uh, no, it's the people who, who shop there don't understand, <laughs> like, how it works. Yeah. Like, people are wild. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. But uh, when you left... What were we yeah, what was about? going on when I when well, I we were talking about Epstein briefly? I don't know. There's not really. I don't really want to go much into it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, no. We all know he's dead. Yet. He's a creep. He's fucked up. He had a mm-hmm. he had a uh, child trafficking ring, potentially. Yeah, uh, there's he knew a lot too of, much, and yeah. that's what ended him. The only interesting <laughs> part about it all is the conspiracy behind everything, from his death to who was involved. That is in possible political power right now um and have have huge influence on a lot of people who have have been possibly potentially doing these things is scary Mm -hmm. to think about you know people like trump people like clinton uh Mm -hmm. you know it's and who killed epstein because i mean they say he killed himself but maybe i'm i'm gonna say he was murdered and uh definitely was murdered (laughs) he was definitely murdered agree with you and uh everybody, yeah. everybody online will agree with that so i think he was yeah. murdered and i think i think someone in a high position of power killed him yep it was or at uh, least got him killed he had a lot of dirt on powerful people so he wanted to cut that loose end yep. <laughs> yeah, basically no, it makes sense it makes complete sense um but yeah i haven't watched the doc yet i will be watching it probably this week with my my mom and my girl so um Maybe we can get more in depth about it soon. Yeah, because I am yeah, I, I am interested in che- yeah I am interested in checking it out and getting all you know a little bit more information on everything that was going on because I didn't know the full story. Um, I've just kind of heard things over years and then all of a sudden he's arrested and all of a sudden he's dead. So, yeah, I just wanna I wanna make sure I digest that properly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet, but I did just finish The Sopranos, and it's funny. The thing about The Sopranos is like there's so many people like without spoiling there's so many people who died who got murdered and then and, and like um th- they're explained to be either they uh joined the witness protection or they disappeared but like yeah. not nobody in the show ever <laughs> joined witness protection or disappeared so it, it was always murder and nobody ever suspected that but it's like it's the mafia you know and it's like this is the same thing it's like why would you suspect suicide it's like the easiest mm-hmm. option like yeah this guy's in prison obviously he would uh they can make it look like he hung himself or whatever or killed himself, right? Like, it's not that hard, but why would it be that? Like, why would he have killed himself? You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I wonder sometimes when they are killing these people. Because he was going like, to have... There was a- clearly no, no motive <laughs> for him to commit suicide. Yeah, you know he I mean? was... So- and he was going to have, like, a pretty... As good of a time in jail as you possibly can because he had money to... Exactly. Uh, to make himself more comfortable in prison. And... uh like, dude, when he was originally arrested before trial, this guy was allowed to leave the jail and just do shit. <laughs> That's wild. Like, he's like, yeah, like, he basically broke probation, like, hundreds of times, and they didn't give a fuck. So like, it happens when you got money, I guess, you know? Yeah, like, it was crazy. Like and, you, and, you, and, you know, and you know people, and you know shit about people. <laughs> yeah, like, it was wild. Like, he was allowed to just hop on his plane and fly anywhere on probation. Yeah, because I mean, if he was uh, in jail like a regular person, then he would have been killed because they don't, they always kill like child molesters, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that's just a wild story to me. Wild, wild story. And it's crazy, you know, a lot of the time you think shit like this just happens in movies, but nope. No, this is this is real life. (laughs) That was real life, yeah. This is real fucking life. Um, yeah, what we're gonna talk about next? What were we gonna talk about next? Uh, we go back to shrooms for a minute. Yeah, let's touch on shrooms. 
what else did you want to talk about though? Did I can't you... remember anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to say that, Oh, I wanted to ask you, would you do more like a higher dosage? Uh, yes. I feel like from the experience that I had, um, even though it was pretty intense as it already was, I probably could do like maximum, maximum five, five grams max. Jeez, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't play with more than that. I don't think not yet. I don't, I don't see a point in it really. I don't know if you build um, a tolerance to, to mushrooms. I, I guess there's some I've sort of tolerance. Of maybe if you do it a lot. But. I, I, I think it's maybe to specific ones, but there's so many different ones out there. You know what I mean? So mm. um, certain ones could knock you off your feet at a gram or two um and others maybe you need some more it's almost like weed you know at different, strain, you? You, different would you, strains would you do more yeah i, I would do more because the curious side of me wants to see what that next level will t- where that next level will take me mm-hmm. um so yeah I, I i would do more but i i don't know i increments like i'm not jumping to eight grams you know what i mean um yeah 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 so like slowly build up to, but I always, I wonder where I'd stop because eight grams sounds like toxic. <laughs> that sounds yeah, like I, I might I feel die. Like mushrooms. There's a, there isn't a thing where, I mean, it happens with weed too. Like you, there's a point where you can have too much. Right. So I think that's, there is definitely a, a point where it's like, that's mm-hmm. just, it's just too much, you know, like you just won't mm-hmm. enjoy it for anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would do more though. Maybe not the next time, but maybe the next, next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how much do you, oh yeah, sorry, actually. How much would you want to do the next time we do it, actually? Then? Probably do the same amount, maybe three. Yeah. Maybe 3.5. Yeah. Yeah. I Like the way I'm approaching the whole mushroom thing is I'm like, I'm just trying to respect it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go into it too confident. I just want to yeah. take it nice and slow. So that's why I'm just like, you know what? I did two last time. I'll just, I'll pump it up a little bit. So next time I'll probably do like 3.5. I'm going to move it up a little bit from there. One but, thing that's interesting is no matter how, it seems like almost no matter how much you take, it's still the same duration. Yeah. Because I, yeah, sure. I took more than you, but you and I came down at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. so like we yeah. were high, we got, yeah. When it like wore off is are all around the same time. So, yeah, exactly. That's what I find interesting. We uh, this time we did the the peanut butter sandwiches, which was a nice experience. Oh. We had to, yeah, you had to break, you had to break down the mushrooms a little bit more, which we didn't do. So you're just yeah. getting like stems popping out, <laughs> and it kind of just throws you off. It's pretty gross it sandwich I've ever eaten, to be honest. But yeah, it was one of the most annoying sandwiches I've ever had to have. But I will say, like, I put enough peanut butter on that thing to mask all taste like all i really had to deal with was just knowing that i'm biting into the mushrooms and maybe a stem poking me at the roof of my mouth <laughs> ian snapped he did like a light little layer yeah, of peanut I... butter. and me and zach were like what the <laughs> <laughs> is this like too chewy like if i put too much i don't know you don't like peanut butter no i love peanut butter i just i don't know i don't know that time i didn't put a lot i don't know why I used to stack that shit in. Yeah, there. yeah. You gotta <laughs> yeah. stack. That's yeah. peanut butter. You gotta. You have to come. Well, maybe I should have put like honey. I should have yeah. put like honey in it or something. That would have been good. A honey sandwich would have been cool. Honey, peanut butter, and honey. Have you tried that? It's I haven't had peanut butter honey, but I like I like a good honey toast, or of course a PB and J. Like you can't go wrong. Yeah, I had jam. I could have done that too. Jeez, that would have been nasty. Mm. But yeah, the mushrooms did smell like ass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I want to do tea. I want to do a tea uh, next time if we can. Yeah. Last time. We go to the tea, beach, I'm, so tea at the beach I'm is not really a, a thing. I'm down for a smoothie. We could do a smoothie at the beach. Oh, that'd be cr- so you're gonna mix it with other shit though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Fruits just a straight mushroom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you put in like you know, like how you do smoothies when you put vegetables and you don't even taste the vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So take it, just blend it up with like fruits. Yeah, some strawberries. Some juice. Yeah, that'd be good. So, some mango, some coconut water, some spinach. You know, make it tropical. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It would be pretty good, actually. I'm going to see if I can join. My Wi-Fi just came back, so hold on. Okay. Oh, what the fuck? Is your power back on? Yeah, my power just came back on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
What did I just do here? I don't know what I just did. Actually, is my Wi-Fi working? Yes, it is. I think we should do it again by maybe the end of the summer. Yeah, I'm is about that, it. Or is that too soon? I'm about it. I'm about it. I might do, I might micro microdose in the meantime though. Like here and there. Like on yeah. days on yeah, a little bit. It's um that's something I definitely want to try. Yeah. For sure. Just because just the just seeing some of the visuals and stuff like that, I really wish like I don't know, like I wanted to like make art. Like a man's felt creative. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just wanted to I wanted to draw the shit I saw in the sky. I wanted to take a picture of it. I wanted to do I wanted to do all this shit. So Yeah. See it's hard because just, like when I took it, it's like you wanna you just wanna experience it. So you don't wanna like have you don't wanna waste the high like translating that into work. You just wanna experience and then translate it. But then you also want to just do it in the moment too, right? So I think that's where microdosing might come in handy because you get just enough buzz to be just like stimulated, but you can actually get work done. You don't it's not too overwhelmingly beautiful where you're just like you just wanna live, you know, inside of this whatever you're seeing. Mm. Mm. I think when I do the microdose, I'm going to do like 0.2. What do you think is a good amount? I think anything above 0.5 is too much. I think they, 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 there's, I'm sure there's a, like, I'll look it up. Yeah. Like a 0.2 is good. Like something like where I could probably still drive. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 Like the equivalent of like, you know, taking like a vape hit kind of just a little, it's just mm. a little mellow thing. Like, you know, mm. Like Mm. I don't think your mic is working. Yeah, you feel it, but you're not throw. It's not like throwing you off. Yeah, like, exactly. Microdosing uh, shrooms must be like a way of like killing your anxiety. I feel like I know they sell capsules too. Like I don't know how that how that is, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm. just like little pills, so it'd be like the right amount. That's something like like once this stuff becomes legal like that would be cool to have like just you know like there'll be like tylenol basically but you pop it and you just you know, you get a little nice buzz going you know yeah exactly yeah yeah what, what would recreational mushrooms look like microdosing basically i feel yeah. like it'd be kind of trippy too like you you could just be chilling having a regular day and you just look at something you're like oh shit. yeah like i don't mind you know <laughs> chilling watching and i don't parents and i look over and they're yeah, and glowing. i see a man like... yeah exactly yeah i'm fine with it you know like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> just out the window just for a yeah. second he's friendly you know exactly something like this does make me want to like um take it in either regular couple of grams or like in a micro dose and you know definitely watch a couple movies again um and see some lit shit like even just some strippy ones too just to send me over that would be great you know yeah a doctor strange and inception or something like that would be wild I remember when I took acid, I, I watched, I just needed to watch the beginning of The Revenant, just the scenes where like the water is going through the trees. And I'm like, this is the greatest movie I've ever that's seen. That's wild. Like, They'll kill it was, you. <laughs> it was one of the yeah. most beautiful like things I've ever seen. Like That's like, sick. It's yeah. awesome. That's sick. That's the next thing I kind of want to try, but I'm kind of stressed about it. At the same time, I'm not ready for the acid. We need to go to like Vancouver and do it's, it or something. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, I mean, I only took half a tab, but like, I think that's a really chill experience. Just taking half yeah. Yeah, it's hmm. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Yo. I feel like I'm gonna turn into like an e boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be I'm not trying to be Joe Rogan. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but but like have you have you done DMT like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. that's the problem with DMT is like once we do that, we're gonna be those guys who are like oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's it. like no, it's definitely, like, I'm definitely doing it. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, you do like, DMT. I, I know I'm just going to always want to talk about it and be like, yo, but like. DMT yeah. though. Like, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> mushrooms, that, that's that's baby shit. Like, DMT is where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Ayahuasca. Yeah, that's where it's Ayahuasca? at. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Well, you don't have a shaman? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't go to South America? And... <laughs> it's a ritual. That'd be fucking up. jokes but yeah mm -hmm. i know yeah that's what that's the one that I'm definitely gonna be doing um i'm gonna do that when i'm older though yeah that one i'm not stressed for i know that that's a long term i don't really yeah, care when we do that but time. i know when we do it we're gonna be ready for it so it doesn't matter yeah it's uh it's funny because now i kind of understand more what it's like to have an experience with something like like mushrooms and then like 
when you're trying to explain it to people, you don't fully have the words. You know what I mean? Before I didn't fully get it, but now I do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's just hard to articulate some of the things that you are feeling and seeing. Um, yeah, so I have a definitely a brand new perspective. perspective. The next day, I just chilled. Didn't really do much. I kind of just reflected on the experience. And uh, yeah, man, I just appreciated it. Appreciated life, appreciated everything. It was a good time. Definitely a good time. Perfect day. Well, part of me almost wants a bad trip for some reason. I feel you. Just so you can go through it. Yeah. Just so if you know that, like, you were getting, like, so you know those symptoms, you know the warning signs of, like, so if it were to happen again, you'd be like, okay, I know that this is what it is, you know? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I almost had one. Did you? Um, Around the time when uh, it started getting a bit darker out, you know, because um, the sun was covered, and I kept telling you guys, like, my stomach was hurting. It was, mm. like, bringing, it was bringing down my mood. And slowly, honestly, everything started becoming a bit darker um around me so i had to like get up and sit down and stuff like that um and it was also around the time that um you guys went to the washroom okay so you so you're by yourself yeah yeah no it was just before that so when you guys were getting up and going to the washroom and whatnot Uh. i was going through it but um when you guys left i had some more time with myself and i was like yeah don't worry bro like it's all temporary like don't worry about it you're gonna feel okay it's fine it's fine it's fine and then that's literally when those guys on the fucking speedboat came through Mm. and started doing all the shit in the waves it was like perfect timing it just made me feel like so much better bro that that walk to the washroom was so weird yeah that was hectic i would never do that and that's why i never did that shit was so (laughs) weird it it wasn't bad but it was so i'm just walking i walk by probably like a hundred (laughs) people a million people and i just put my shades on i just put my shades on so (laughs) no one could tell i'm looking weird but i felt like everyone was looking at me yeah and it didn't make the biggest problem the the biggest problem with shrooms is like you don't look weird but you're by you feel like you're you're being weird you know like yeah yeah i knew that and i knew that i knew i didn't look weird yeah um so i remember i try to remember that and uh because your eyes don't look any different like i think they dilate more or something but like you you don't you can't tell like bro i had to like communicate with people too because it was so annoying when when i went to the (laughs) washroom um this girl was standing in front of the, the men's washroom and I was being on shrooms, first of all, not understand what the fuck's going on. But I think even if I was sober, I'd be confused because she was blocking the doorway. And I'm like, why? So I tried to just walk past her and she's like, excuse me, but my friend's in there. We couldn't find the woman's washroom. So she's just, oh, in- shit. and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And I stand back and just wait. But it was, just, it was walk, an awkward experience. And they had to walk like, seven I'm on mushrooms, by the way. Direction. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to figure out if this is real. Like, yeah, like, you know, you're yeah. looking at them like, yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't know who the fuck she was. Like, yeah. She worked there. <laughs> I could never, bro. I could bro. never. But yeah, it was super weird. Um, and even taking a piss. <laughs> that was funny. That's wild. Fucking um, Zach was jokes <laughs> and annoying, but he was just, you know he was Zach. Like he was kind of he annoying. Was he was he really wanted to talk to us all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Like, we'd be chilling in silence, vibing out. Both of us, our eyes closed. And he'd just throw a rock into the water. Looking at colors in our eyelids. And then he'd just chuck a fucking rock in water. And I just... And we open our eyes. And he's like, that wasn't me, man. And we're like, yo, can you just chill? He he wasn't feeling it, for sure. (laughs) Can you just chill for a second? It was so funny. That's the easiest test. Like, you can't describe exactly the experience of mushroom but you can describe people who aren't on much like who aren't really feeling yeah it. like you can tell because if they're like yo this is sick that means it's not they're, they're not feeling anything yeah or they're I just feeling that little you he know got, that yeah little... he, he was feeling it a bit later yeah. in a few waves and whatnot um but yeah he didn't really fully get there like like me and ian mm-hmm. and we told him that we we're like yeah you're you're doing a little bit like it's most likely not going to hit you but mm-hmm. since this is the first time like try it like we'll see you know but next time, I mean, you know. yeah, like because that 50 milligrams, so yeah, you know, <laughs> that's why we said that, yeah, yeah, that's why we gave him that little, just yeah. Bit. I'm surprised, that's why I'm surprised he didn't feel anything because, yeah, that 15 I mean, milligram edible, just a little gummy, half a gummy, crushed Zach, <laughs> <laughs> did he crush? 
crushed it. Oh my god. This there are at least frozen in time, you know. There are at least <laughs> nine nine to ten dudes in the room and nothing but yelling was going on. And Zach was there just What? <laughs> it's like what? It's crazy. What? It's crazy. But yeah, that crushed him. That was jokes. I don't think I've ever been that paralyzed. Like, I mean, I've been like, I've gotten to the point where I was like, okay, I gotta go lie down. You know, mm-hmm. maybe I haven't uh, been fucked up. Like, I haven't been too messed up on edibles in front of people, so I don't know how I would react. But like, I'm pretty sure no, I would just be like, yo, I gotta go sleep or something. No, no, you can't. But that's the thing. You think you would, but you yeah. can't. Like, you can't even. Yeah. You can't even begin to think about even <laughs> making that movement or saying <laughs> or guess, even yeah. saying that. It's like. Yeah. It's like you're literally stuck and all you're all you are is you're stuck in your head just trying to say like you remember um in Kill Bill when she had been uh unconscious for so long um that she couldn't move her fucking her toe? Mm. That's what it feels like. It's like you're in your head just trying to move mm. any part of your body. Mm. But you it's just not yeah, working. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. And then man's are looking at you and the only thing you can do is do this. <laughs> That's the only part you can move is the <laughs> <laughs> you just look at them with the side eye. <laughs> like oh. you're stuck on that uh, that anti the gravitron or whatever. Literally, yeah. and all you're hearing is yo 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 yo. you got knocked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah, it's yeah, crazy because yeah. I know exactly what Zach was going through mm. when he was sitting there. He's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was I was close. pretty high that night too, and yeah. but I had some of that liquor, and then it then it hit me. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Zach froze. Yeah, Zach was. Yeah, I would time. say I was just more drunk than than high. But it's always it's always hard to figure it out after that point once you've had like. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it's sometimes yeah. like the alcohol or. So, yeah, sometimes like alcohol will make you more high, so I don't mm. know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's weird to. It's not weird. It's uh, fun to see what type of mixes even do to you. You know what I mean? Like even that again when I when I rolled up when we we're doing the mushrooms that just helped it. Just sent me over. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do weed with it. Yeah, I was I've like been reading nah. things though about like weed. If you're like, if you know what weed does to you, then like it can help with your <laughs> anxiety, especially too. Because I mean, you know, like I know that I chill out every time I smoke. So it's like, even if it doesn't do that, like you can tell yourself that that's what it's gonna do. That's so feeling. You know, that's literally what it was. Because yeah. again, like I was, my stomach was hurting, and then uh, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna smoke. I'm gonna chill, smoke, and then they left. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I had some time, so it was good. I think it's the thing. It's like if you think that the weed is gonna fuck you up even more, then it it might. But if you yeah. know that like the weed is just supposed to like chill you out or just like sometimes the mushroom effects can get a little bit. Um, oh, we got the freebies. Yeah, we got the free. Uh, um, yeah, sometimes the mushrooms can get you know too anxiety ridden and it's like you can use the weed to just like mellow you out mm-hmm. like i feel like an edible and a, a mushroom combo would be nice you know i don't know that might crush you, man. <laughs> holy that, fuck that might crush you that would like a, a good mix though you know what i mean a good oh, mix. bro when they hit you at the same time mm-hmm. you time it somehow or not even the the, yeah. the mushroom will hit you first most likely but yeah. then the edible will get you like two hours down the line oh, just, mash, just mash up your back <laughs> That might be too much. Yeah. I don't know. I try it, but I don't know. I have no fucking clue. But yeah, good experience overall. Perfect day. Now let's uh let's get to it, Ian. Say it. Born hub? Yeah. But it's not positive news. Not it's actually positive news. really fucked up and it goes back to the Epstein type of topic. Mm-hmm. Um, so Pornhub has been in the news regarding content. I mean, this has been around for a while, too. Has it? And you know what? Yes. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's been a thing for a while. It's just being brought up at a bigger number. Again, almost like the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Okay. It's just okay. It's a thing I think that's coming up. A lot more numbers of people. A lot more people are coming out and talking about it. A lot so. of people. So, I like it. Yeah. So, Pornhub's under flack getting, yeah, getting attacked for basically posting content or well they don't but people on their website have posted content that is underage mm-hmm. allegedly underage girls uh and sex doing sex sexual acts um things and that count as, 
Yeah, things that count as child pornography. Potential basically. child pornography, yeah. potential rape as well, mm-hmm. um, on the website, uh, and staying up there for way longer than it should be because stuff yeah. like that can get uploaded because it is a site that is free to upload, like YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, YouTube has moder has like algorithms and moderators that take stuff like that down. Mm-hmm. Then you start to wonder why Pornhub didn't do that or why it took so long to take videos like that down when the victims are asking or pleading and taking even bringing their lawyers into the mix to take mm-hmm. these these videos down and Pornhub just took forever to do it um it's it's really you got to question why right mm-hmm. yeah i don't obviously we don't know how big Pornhub's team is but it, yeah, it would, has to be big, man, because it's. Like I don't top. know how, but I don't. At the same time, I don't know how big it would be. Fair enough. You know? Fair enough. Because realistically, I don't want to compare it to this, but like something like Facebook mm. was run off by a couple people. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. yeah, but at the same time, like they know that if they're a porn website, like they gotta, they have mm-hmm. to, ha- they have to have a staff for this, like because this yeah. is a big issue, right? That's like, what I'm saying. Maybe they're just yeah. slacking on it. I don't know yeah. what they're something like that their funds are like i'm sure they have lots of them but uh, lots of money but I, I wonder where it's being spent then if it's not in screening the content that's going onto their website you know what i mean yeah because yeah go yeah. ahead go ahead no because facebook yes facebook and youtube are, are relatively really good at deleting stuff like that really quickly mm-hmm. um their algorithms pick up on it and with, with like sex videos it's a little harder because if you have a 17 year old in a video, the algorithm isn't going to be able to identify a 17 year old. Exactly. So I think we what, all, what, we all don't look the same too. So exactly. But, but Pornhub, believe it or not, doesn't have, uh, they don't require the content creators to ID or really? do they? Do I, I'm they? pretty sure they should, but maybe, maybe actually, no, they don't technically. Cause it's just a basic enter in your birthday. Yeah, like, do they, do you have to scan your driver's license and send it in? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not even sure. Because I'll say this, we, we've we made an account and that was for 750 because that's when we were thinking about doing, yeah. pass it on there, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were going to say, you know, let's premiere the video on there. Instead. Which, which, which back then I thought was a crazy idea, but now it's actually being done. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking uh, about. But, but I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm ha- now I'm happy video. we did it. <laughs> you know the ge uh, video G-Z. that just came out yeah exactly like, yeah that's on there yeah um, well, again we didn't mainly because you know we respected the girls in it and it wasn't something that we had true. discussed prior with them yeah. so we're like we're not we're not gonna just throw that at them and surprise them like that because they might not want to be up on the website either but um that creating a count and that account so that we can put content up i just had to put in a birthday and that was it <laughs> yeah so i guess they need better, better ways of IDing the individuals who are in the video. So mm-hmm. talking like we need photos and and identification mm-hmm. potentially because yeah. Cause, or the cause, upload doesn't YouTube like isn't there a th- part where it's like once you're uploading a video, there's like a little bit of time where they need to check it before it goes up or or is it they there is something right where they kind of like screen it do they need to review it before yeah i think they need to review if they're not gonna be yeah if they're not gonna be um if they're not gonna be village vigilant about the uh, like the user stuff they should at least have a process where it's like before the video is posted to their website they make sure to review it so it takes 24 hours for you yeah now that would require more resources on their on their behalf but but it's necessary. You're running a, a website with sex and, mm-hmm. and a lot of fucked up things can happen when, when you have that freedom to post sex videos and it's not even just underage stuff. You're talking like there's revenge porn yeah, exactly. and there's all these other things. Cause there's a lot of revenge porn on Pornhub where exes are posting videos of, that they recorded years ago mm-hmm. up there without the other person's consent. And that's just being, you know, that's just being allowed on the site technically because it is yeah. legal. Exactly. It's legal besides the fact that the person doesn't want to be in it. So then they have to dispute it and it's just a pain in the ass for everyone. Um, yeah. So what, which one do you guys think would be a better, like immediate progressive fix? Would it be, would it be getting more people to review or would it be, um, 
review the actual content or would it be getting more people to actually review um, ages and stuff like that? I think, I think what Kevin, the idea that Kevin said, reviewing videos before they're officially released is Mm -hmm. probably what they need to do. Um, I mean, release, I mean, the, the reviewing the users too would, would definitely help. Yeah, it would definitely help, but I don't know if that's going to be a, an easy fix, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's true too. Yeah. The thing is a lot of, a lot of people upload stuff that they didn't even make too. So then there's all of that. Uh, true. And you know what I mean? Like you just have those random puppet accounts that just post shit. Yeah. Yeah. They've seen from other sites mm-hmm. reposting stuff. So a lot of content isn't even original content creator stuff. It's like re uploads. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like asking for or trying to get Pornhub like shut down, which I don't really see happening realistically. Mm. Um, no. Mainly because, yes, they're the YouTube of this industry. You know what I mean? I feel like what it's they would big. need to do is, yeah, it's too big. Like it's one of those things where they just need to step up and figure out a way to reassure people that they will make sure that they are reviewing content reviewing ages reviewing everything that's being put yeah, up on you, their website the thing i don't understand if well unless pornhub is that much of a powerful company it is a canadian company by the way mm-hmm. um so i don't know what that how that affects everything but you think uh whoever's in charge of that stuff i was gonna say fbi but since Pornhub's technically canadian it would be the canadian government mm-hmm. um you think they'd be getting involved if there was child pornography on there right that's true. Yeah, you're right. And that's not something that we are hearing a lot about at all. Yeah. So, yeah, that is uh, that is something that should definitely be looked at. Just to, again, just to, I'm not even trying to shut them down or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, maybe they do need to get those authorities involved so they can figure out a better strategy on making sure that nothing like this happens again. That's simply it, because there are a lot of people that have been assaulted, and that's not fair to what they've gone through. You know what I mean? Them already having to live with this thing. And now it's been up for a year on a website and they didn't find out into until two months ago. And you know what I mean? And the company's not hitting them back or not taking their, their concerns seriously. So I don't know. I feel like that's a good way to hopefully progress somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, but I can't, uh, Oh, you're trying like to find it? Numbers, but yeah, it's somewhere between 1.5 and 2 billion, I think. Okay. So yeah. yeah. These people who run this site are very powerful. And we have to keep that in mind because they are the CEOs of MindGeek, which own a lot mm-hmm. of more, a lot more companies than just porn up. We're talking browsers. We're talking, uh, there's a couple others. Yeah. Reality Kings. There's a few others. Um, so they're almost like a little monopoly on the industry here. Yeah. And sure. uh, they... <laughs> a lot of power and i hope they use it properly because it's very unfortunate and uh, yeah just i i like to think that maybe it just slipped through the cracks Mm -hmm. which is possible because you have a site that is getting potentially thousands of thousands of videos uploaded daily which i get yeah but at the same time still working in a specific field where yeah it's very you gotta take the extra precautions to make sure that you guys can make your money at the end of the day and people are happy yeah you know what i mean yeah so yeah so i I just i don't know if they've come out with an actual statement about all this shit though i don't think so which concerns me too because they should i haven't seen anything uh personally yet that that just makes you look guilty so i would definitely say something one million Mm -hmm. people signed the petition that's the latest news that's a big that's a lot of people big it's a big number for sure that's a lot of fucking people yeah do we have a Twitter, or where would where would a man's make a uh, statements? Uh, I think it was a lot of them through Twitter. Yeah. Pornhub would do Twitter. It's funny because Pornhub's always been in publicly. They've had good PR. Yeah, they have great PR. That's what I've always thought because they are always getting involved with charity and and other things and mm-hmm. sex positive <laughs> events and and I've always thought they've had good PR. So when I heard about this, and I guess I'm late to the news because it's been news for a while, but. I was a little surprised yeah. and uh, I'm like, shit. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's been going on. There's a lot of stuff going on with Pornhub, like mm. even the content creators complaining themselves, like, you know, there's not 
we're not making that much off of this thing. This this is not a good way. That's why a lot of them are moving to OnlyFans mm -hmm. and Patreon and this and that because they're able mm -hmm. to get their funds straight from their fans instead of having to work with uh, Pornhub as a company. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in that industry, man. Yeah, I would love for one day, hopefully we can get somebody and just, yo, we can have a good discussion about what's going on in the industry and, um, you know, like some of the truths behind it, you know, some of the stuff that we want to know. <laughs> what's yeah, going if on. you're listening or whatever, you know, someone that has a, who's a Pornhub content creator. Yeah. <laughs> hop on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I'd like to know how sure. it works. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, you can tell that obviously Pornhub made their, they got, I mean, they didn't need to make make their brand because it's just porn but like it's obviously like amateur stuff that's fueled them right yeah it's the booming main database so it's like these content creators have only become a popular like it's become really popular in the past like five years and like things like only, only fans and patreon have really made like porn stars or whatever like their own brand you know even more so than it was before because before it was just like you had you know you only knew like a couple names of people who were like in the main movies and stuff right? amateur yeah. stuff has really grown yeah on pornhub because yeah. i think before pornhub was really just re-uploaded clips of other you know stuff you'd pay for yeah and that's why it became big because it was a free exactly. porn, porn when porn started it wasn't free and it became mm -hmm. free with pornhub and other sites like that tube sites but it was just like short clips of like stuff you would pay for yeah but then the amateur stuff started coming in mm -hmm. and then that's when it like yeah then it became really about that on and then the, the bigger produ production company stuff started putting their shit on on Pornhub and like all those sites too right with like longer previews and like full mm -hmm. stuff and yeah I think now they're starting to like take back control of their own content again too mm -hmm. so it's like yeah Every, everybody's just trying to get their content back it seems you know what I mean yeah. like um I don't know it's like it's very interesting it's happening in all all industries the content creators are you know trying to get their rightful amounts the, yeah. right, the, the right for money and be treated correctly as well and making sure that you know these bigger companies aren't taking advantage of them so yo power to the people yeah. at the end of the day yeah that's a huge topic in in the music industry right now that was the whole point of the blackout tuesday yeah um yeah every industry is affected by this you know people are trying to just take control of what's what's theirs mm -hmm. it's all related it's all related all related at the end of the day fucking so what's on the um the the AliExpress? Oh, true. Tips? Yeah, yeah. I found out how to get my my wish list. On <laughs> oh, my wish list is probably it's probably like three million dollars right now. <laughs> All right, yo. So we're gonna start a GoFundMe, and we're gonna get three million dollars. So we could buy everything. <laughs> Yeah, at least the water park, yo. I know, bro. Like, if I was a mega rich YouTuber, that's the content I'd be making. Yeah, I'd man. be like, enable the uh, the screen sharing or whatever. Wouldn't that be oh, a yeah. sick video? I bought a water park on AliExpress. That would be sick. <laughs> and it gets shit. I film it being shipped to my house, and I have to. Yeah. Make it. <laughs> oh, here I am trying to do it. It's you, Ian. You have to do it. Oh yeah, right. My right. bad. Okay. I thought it was me. I'm here trying to change uh, it. Uh. Allow record or allowed screen share? Yeah. How the fuck do I do that? Uh, it's like the oh. allowing to record. Oh. Bless you. Okay. There you go. Multiple participants can share. Are you allowed to? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Got it. Let's see. All right. Share. Okay. Did I show you this guy's one? This one? They got the robot, the... The jumping nope. robot. Oh, they got the robot dog thingy. Yeah, that's just wild, man. That's what people don't understand, man. This shit's real. <laughs> oh, that's not. This isn't the one that jumps, but there's that one that's yeah, the, deliver packages that can run like twenty. But bro, an hour and like even look at those guys kicking it, man. That's just barely, barely moving. It's sturdy. What does it do? It just walks around. Yeah. It just walks around. That was just a robot dog. This is that floating tent I was talking about. That uh, one's nasty. What else is yeah, some ATVs. Uh, yeah, going to the new one. Basketball machine. Oh, printer. Get that for the office. Yeah, yeah yo. <laughs> this fucking this like robot. <laughs> the yo. fuck is that, man? <laughs> Twenty-eight racks? Yeah. It's not bad <laughs> still. 
business rent commercial smart humanoid waiter oh takes your I order think, yeah like a menu type yeah like bro that's what i'm yeah. saying yo restaurants gonna be filled with those guys <laughs> that's what i'm saying Server, <laughs> servers are gone just you're now. gonna be out of a job soon man yeah this is definitely you don't, technology we're gonna be seeing soon right and you don't have to tip the robots you know nah they don't give a fuck oh we'll just just stick a battery in my pouch you don't like. have to pay them either it's blessed <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> And so they realize who, what they are, right? and they try to kill us. What is that? Oh my These god! Mini, like, uh, yeah, like a mini scuba diving kind of. You can just like take it and like swim around. Basically, it's like a oh, that looks fun. Type thing. How much is that? Yeah, that's eight hundred. Like eight hundred US. We could cop that just now. Eight hundred <laughs> yeah. US, and they're like, oh, sick. This shit was just looking crazy. It's just like an electric car for kids, but like. That's it. A go-kart, basically. But man, that's just, you know, a couple of... Pulling up. Just pulling yeah. up. Five bills? Like, come on, yo. That's reasonable. That's, that's light, yo. Are they have happiness? The roller, they got the roller skate shoes. Oh, those are actually hard. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Jeez. Heelys, yo. But with, like, two wheels. Two sets. Yeah, and they got these, like, stilt shoes, too. What the fuck? I think you can like jump on jump around. Oh, one of the men's are like the kangaroo shoes. Yeah, what, like the Blade Runner guy. Holy, cool, bro! What if what if NBA players wear those? You start running around. You got the unis, yo, the unicycles, or it's something. I don't know what the fuck. This guy's posed up on that shit, man. <laughs> bro. They mud. they the fucking. Would they bring this white guy to China to take the photo? Like. <laughs> Holy shit, that shit's hard. <laughs> He's flexing stuff. What? Yeah, and he has a ting? The ting? You get a ting? He pulled up on her and he copped her, yeah. The ting with the flat What is he asses. doing with the fucking photo next to that one? The guy in the car. He's like, look at this guy driving his car. <laughs> fucking loser. No, that's his girl, bro. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Same thing, holy. That's oh. his flat, ba- this is flat batty girl. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she actually is a twig, yeah. yeah. Uh no sorry. They got a, a sauna. <laughs> all booties matter. Yes. Sauna room. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. That is sick. You know, I don't really go on AliExpress like that. Like I really need to. This yeah, this yours. is entertainment, dude. Why Are is you there telling an me elephant? A, that's that for an elephant? Is that for a a house elephant? <laughs> this is what I've been I've been starting to see this recently. Like um I, like we were looking up like air fryer, so I typed in air fryer. I think if you, if I did it here. You'll see one. It's just like they just photoshopped like a fucking turkey. <laughs> That's fucking jokes. Like, <laughs> yeah, and like the shit, the shit with the scooter, like they just want to show you that, like it's a, it'll hold weight. Yeah, it'll hold an elephant. Like what are they? That's just friends? not even to scale, bro. That doesn't even make sense. Why <laughs> like is there? You had, all you had to do was put his foot in it. You know, like four hundred kilograms max loading. And they have a mini baby elephant. But like, why? <laughs> a, a house elephant, bro. Who's 400 kilograms? <laughs> Holy yeah, this shit. shit looks hard though, still. That is, yeah, those wheels are pretty nice. Yeah. A lot of traction. They got like these like, uh, like different phone lenses. They have like this anamorphic one. Oh mm. wait, is this an actual video? Oh wait, no, they had like lenses too. I don't know if I saved those. They have like God. this boat. One of these that looks boats. sick. Yeah. Oh shit! Need oh, that. I'd love that. Yeah. That's wild. Okay, that's that an is... actual investment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's sick. You save that one. Is that a saved one? Yeah, how much is this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Forty-eight hundred. Oh, this is different. I don't like that one as much. I like the table. Oh. Yeah, that looks yeah, like it's gonna hard, tip. Yeah. You know what? Definitely. Actually, I'm not even joking. This needs to be saved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saved this one slow. This that is definitely sick. a cop. Like that's yeah. a def. If a man just how much is that? Every man just puts in like. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Like one point five? Couple grand, yeah. Oh shit! 1. The shipping too, yo. Get that for oh, the shit. cottage. Is that the what? ship? Is that with the shipping? No, that's plus. So it's this plus oh. shipping. Oh. So it's ten grand. Oh shit! Yo, that All makes right, sense. No, no, no. Too much. Like, I soft. We'll we'll drive. We'll drive to wherever that is. Wherever it's at. We gotta have a cheaper one, yo. What is this? Yo? Oh, it's one of those like things. Oh, true. Yeah. And then, yeah, the last thing, they have, like, a darkroom kit. I don't know if you guys want to. Well, that's nasty, too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just something to keep in mind. $68. That's yeah. not bad. That's not bad at all, man. 
comes yeah. with yeah, it comes with some shit. Think about that. Free shipping. With the shot, I think. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I mean the film will all be good. Yeah, least. the film's probably gonna be fine, but yeah. I don't know about that other shit. Yeah, I mean looks good, but you don't know what you get, but yeah. Shit. Well, that's some pretty nasty stuff there, man. Oh yeah, this one too. But come on. Yeah, this is hard. You got the Nintendo Go Kart. What the fuck is this? Is that a helmet? I feel like it does something sick though, or is it just just a light? That better be a laser. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, definitely to get on AliExpress because I'm looking at some of these things and I'm like, Serb. If I had money, <laughs> that's just entertainment, bordering that and getting it. That's a you video. know? See, look at that suit. Even like this would be just sick for a video. Yeah. yeah. Survival suit, protective. Um, em- what? What the fuck? Does it make you float? Yeah. But then when when are you wearing this? I think like, I think it's just like a, like a raft, but like a single person raft, basically. So it's something that you just have like on a boat, maybe. But if this shit's sinking, what? I have to put this on? Yeah. <laughs> and then float, you know? Yeah. It'd look sick, though. It'd be sick that, for a video. Yeah, we're going to need to cop that for a video. How much was that? Two bills. Oh, two bills. Oh, shit, if I pull up to the beach with that on, bro. Just float. <laughs> Start floating around. Just float to the States. <laughs> to Buffalo. Cool. It's good for now. Get back here. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, those are hard. Those are definitely hard. Definitely a couple cops in there. Um uh because the price we want for cool shit. Yeah, we want cool shit and stuff to entertain ourselves. But, so like that shit, half the stuff we just saw, like no one has here. Yeah. So you'd be like the first man to have that shit. Yeah, I imagine just going to the beach with that thing and just tossing it in the water and just floating. Bro, I want one of those robots. Pull up to that man's house. He has a robot directly. One that serves you. Here's yeah. the washroom. <laughs> That's crazy. And with the robot dog for no reason. The dog? Just the just dog. To kick, just to kick it around. You know? <laughs> 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 fucking hilarious. All right. Um, but yeah, anyway, man, just want to touch on anything else today? Probably going to wrap it here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I feel like well, it was a long one. It was a weird one, but it was a weird one. It wasn't the the I want to say it was the best show, but it was a good show. Yeah. It's not bad. Uh, just and it wasn't it wasn't our fault that it was bad. It was just technical. Yeah, shows. stupid power went out. What, what what are we gonna do? We're gonna do it next week in person. So um yeah, this might be the la- the last of the uh the the online pods. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. before we go quick. Um, Sydney, it was so funny. She she hit me up before we were doing the pod, and she's like, "Yo, are we still doing this on Zoom after their statements?" And I'm like, "And I'm like, what? I'm like, what did they say?" But it was because of uh, the uh, privacy thing. Did you guys hear about it? No, I mean, I've heard a little bit about their privacy things, but like, I've uh, seen people who are like skeptical about doing these Zoom chats because of the privacy. But yeah, like, like our apparently, privacy. Yeah. yeah, apparently, so Zoom has or the police have the authority basically to take any zoom call that's been recorded through the application um, and give it to the piece, the police, um, but only for free users. If you're paid, then you have the security that goes along. with Oh, zoom. that's weird. Yeah, exactly. What? Exactly. So not everybody has access to the security. No, nah, everyone should just get it exactly yeah that's or not yeah. or not one yeah. or the other <laughs> exactly like give it to us all or don't give it to anybody mm-hmm. yeah so that's the biggest thing that's you know? yeah that's not a feature where i'm like okay yeah i'll buy i'll buy it now because i don't want the po- the police to see my shit like that's not yeah. a that's, that's not a feature that's, that's just supposed to be some incentive to pay that's kind of yeah. fucked. yeah that's like that's like so, buying a house and then the man's like but if you buy the door <laughs> you'll be protected from the yeah. from the outside yeah, and the doors. The doors. The price of another house. Yeah, and like, like what do you think that like scumbags don't have money? Like, if you're doing yeah. some shit that you gotta cover up on Zoom, obviously you're gonna spend the money. Exactly. Like, you're not doing free shit on Zoom. Talking that's about good murder point. on Zoom. Mm-hmm. You know? Where the f- <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally true. Yeah, if you you need to really say something on here that's not yeah. supposed to be said. 
you would just pay that whatever it is yeah to cover it up potentially so yeah i just i just told her i'm like well today's like our last zoom podcast anyways pretty much um unless something crazy happens in the future or whatever reason we need to do this but yeah don't worry about it because and realistically man's already have all of our information we already said fuck the police on here so exactly it's done yeah (laughs) <laughs> I guess, yeah i guess it, you know we can say that fuck the police and they won't do anything so fuck the police well, I gotta, <laughs> it's freedom I of speech on man. My door. it's freedom of speech i can say that yeah we could say that it's freedom of speech yeah. So. yeah definitely but they don't give a fuck you know what i mean freedom yeah. of speech yeah they have the freedom to kick my door down oh i'm sure zoom is not on the side of all lives matter so yeah exactly. even if they're pretending to be on the other side mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah just a fun thing I learned today about Zoom and its uh, privacy and some of the issues that are going on with it. Um, anyways, that's a whole nother thing. We we don't have the we don't have the resources to deal about that deal with that right now. Like yeah. thinking about what the government has access to. For us. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I wasn't even stressing it. I'm like, bro, they have everything already. Yeah. The only thing they haven't done is get a chip in us. Like yeah, some of us. Yeah, have. yeah so, exactly. That's all they don't have on me. They got they know where I live. They know what my credit score is. They don't want to have my bank account. They're watching, so it's fine. It's done. Just don't be doing any surgeries where you have to be put under, unless you you know you know the doctors. Are, like on, Sanpreet's the only person operating. On yeah, you. if yeah. Sanpreet's not in the room, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if it, even if imagine getting their their teeth pulled out of the dentist. Not yeah. Me. I need Sanpreet in the room or something, bro. It's but crazy yes, to think that that could be work. happening. Yeah, man. You wake up never the same. But you don't know that you're not the same. Exactly. It's almost like that um that episode of Seinfeld, man. Or the dentist where he's like, yo, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. They like fucked me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. And it's crazy, man, because you just don't know. You probably yeah. just don't know. And you can have a hunch, you just don't know. It's really crazy. I remember yeah. seeing that episode and I was like, shit, yo, I'm never getting that gas, bro. Never. <laughs> Keep me awake, yo. Yeah. Watching I'll you deal with you, the pain, you know, as, as long you as dig I dig out my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but dig it out the right way. You'll dig it out with the utensils. <laughs> Not with anything else. So but yeah. Anyways, good pod today. Yeah. Yep. Even with all the technical issues. Shouts out Sydney for coming on. It's too bad we couldn't get her to like to kind of end because her power went out and whatnot. Um she was at a friend's house and she was like, I didn't even bring my fucking phone charger, so don't worry about it. It's all um, good. So yeah, shout out to her. Um, yeah, shout out to you guys. Shout out to the shrooms. Thank you for listening. Thank uh, you for episode listening. Episode number thirty-seven. Most lit pod in the world. Face. Except for that time that uh, Jamal's power went out. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was, was all lit. Facts. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't lit then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it was got kind of awkward because I was like, "Yo, I hope I didn't like end this really embarrassing." And I probably did. I was probably like, what? Uh? No, I think you, you were, were just frozen. Like halfway, yeah, you were like halfway through a sentence. And I think you had a point and it just didn't finish. So we were just like waiting and we were like, did you freeze? And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah oh. They were like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <whatever. laughs> Anyways, thank Thanks. you for listening. Deuces.